Hi folks, and welcome to this video on Notes Receivable. Notes Receivable are an asset, and you can find them if they're short-term, as we've indicated here, uh, in the Current Assets section, or if they're long-term notes, you would find them in the Non-Current Assets section under Long-Term Investments. Now, they can bear interest, which means that the interest rate on the note is uh, stated, or they can be non-interest bearing. Non-interest bearing means that they um, uh, actually don't have a stated rate of interest in the question, so we'd have to imply it. So again, it doesn't, necess it doesn't mean that these non-interest bearing notes have no interest or bear zero interest, and sometimes they are referred to as zero interest bearing notes. What it does mean is that the amount, the rate of interest is not stated on the face of the note. And that could be because they uh, are not using a market rate. Um, sometimes notes that are made between two related parties, this is a, a common practice. So um, in any case, we may need to calculate the rate of interest being charged um, to the person uh, or the corporation and then um, uh, so we can make our journal entries to record uh, interest revenue but we'll get to that in a minute. So again we say here that the amount of interest on a non-interest bearing note is implied okay when we compare the amount that we borrowed to the amount that we paid back and we're going to use our calculators use the present value functions in order to determine what the implied rate of interest is. We'll see that when we get to long-term notes. Notes can be exchanged for cash, property, goods, or services. So in other words, you can debit notes receivable and credit cash. But if you're not giving cash, maybe you're providing services. So you might credit service or sales, re or sales revenue when you set up the note. That's possible. Note, Short-term notes are recorded at their face value, and long-term notes have to be recorded using the effective interest method. So the idea here is that you might remember when you did uh, bond liabilities in a previous course, we used the effective interest method to calculate interest expense on the bond liability. Here we're going to use the effective interest method to calculate interest revenue on the investment notes receivable. So let's begin talking about short-term notes and look at how the accounting for those, uh, those items works. So we're going to assume, first of all, that we have short-term non-interest bearing notes. And if we do, the interest receivable is included directly in the note itself, so we don't have a separate account for note receivable when we're accruing interest. If it's interest bearing, uh, the short-term note, then interest receivable stands on, on its own and it's separate from the note. So let's have a look uh, at an example to demonstrate these two items up here. Let's say we have a short-term non-interest bearing note whereby we exchange our account receivable for a note receivable. Um, and we do this with a customer over a three-month period, and we want payment of $2,120 in three months. Notice it's non-interest bearing because we don't state the rate of interest. But uh, also notice here in this question that we're exchanging, and we can see this from our entry at issue, we're exchanging or giving up an account receivable, so we're crediting it, and we're debiting the notes receivable. We're setting up a note. Um, a lot of times companies, if they aren't having any success collecting on an account receivable, they can actually draw up a more legally enforceable claim through using a promissory note or note receivable. And in that case, they would just exchange the account receivable and set up a note receivable. Now, when we go to collect in three months, that's at the end of March, what we would do is we would collect our $2,120, we would credit our notes receivable for $2,000, and that $120 that we got paid back of the $2,120 is interest revenue. Now, here's where how we handle interest receivable comes in. Because if we had a January 31st year end, we'd have to accrue, uh, we'd have to accrue interest. So in our case, to do that, because we have a short-term non-interest bearing note, we're going to have any of that interest receivable included in the note. 
So we're going to debit the notes receivable and credit interest revenue. For how much? Well, the total amount of revenue over the three months that um, the company would earn is $120. But we want to take one third of that or one month of three of that because that $120 is over three months. We want to take one month for the month of January and accrue it or set it up as receivable in our uh, current asset section of the balance sheet. So we're going to um, calculate that to be $40. So that debit to note receivable of $40 is really as a result of the interest. But with non-interest bearing short-term notes, the interest is included in the note itself. Now, if we accrue this interest at $40, what happens at uh, March 31st when we go to collect? So this would be here at March 31st. I'm just going to see without no, oh, didn't work out for me that way, but let me, let me see if we can do here. Uh, maybe we can just put in here March 31st so we know what date we're working at. Okay, what are we going to do? Well, now, at the end of the three-month period, we're going to get our $2,120 as stated in the question. All right, but we're not going to have any more note receivable because the, the amount that we're getting paid back includes the settlement of the note. Well, now, in the note... We set it up for 2000 and don't forget, we also debited it uh, for $40 here, right? So that 2000 plus the 40 means the note receivable is sitting on our books at this point at $2,040. So we're going to credit that because we're, that's part of the money we're getting back, right? But we do have to calculate interest revenue from the period running from February the 1st to March the 31st, which is two months. So those two months are February and March, right? Those two months. And that's going to give us $80. Okay? Now, let's have a look and see how the question might be different if we had a short-term interest-bearing note. So if the note's interest-bearing, you'll notice here that we're stating the interest. We're also going to use the interest receivable account at the year end when we do our accrual. So now, if we exchange an account receivable for a note receivable in the value of $4,000, the entry at issue date looks very similar to what we had with the non-interest bearing. The only difference is the numbers are different, so we're going to debit the note receivable and credit accounts receivable for $4,000. If we're collecting at June the 30th, which is six months down the road, how much are we collecting? Well, we're collecting our 4000 that we gave out, which was sitting in the note here, but we're also going to be collecting interest, right? So how much would your interest be? Well, we would calculate interest to be, and I'll just do it up here, 4000 times 5% times one half. And the reason I'm multiplying it by a half is because that half is six months or a half a year. Don't forget your interest rate um, is always stated annually. And all, all we'll do is divide, divide it by two or multiply it by a half to get it for six months. And that would give us a hundred dollars. So we'd book interest revenue for a hundred dollars. Now how would your entry be different if we had a March 31st year end? Well, at March 31st, we would set up our interest receivable and our interest revenue. Again, because the um, rate is stated with short-term notes, what we do is we debit the interest receivable directly. And that's going to be January, February, and March, which is half of our six-month period. Well, we know that interest for the entire six-month period is $100. For, so for three months of six, it's going to be... Um, uh, $50. So you can take that to be uh, $100 times 3 over 6 or 1 half, right? So now what happens at maturity when we collect? Well, again, we're going to get our $4,100, no problem. But don't forget, part of the $4,100 includes this interest receivable that we were waiting to collect. Well, now we've got it because it's part of this $50, it's part of this $100 in here, right? But don't forget, we've also got to book interest revenue 
for the last six month period or sorry last three months of the six month period so in other words we made an entry to update the interest receivable and interest revenue to the end of March but what about April to June so this interest revenue here represents April to June so if I can just do this So we've got um, $100 times three months over six. And this is again, April to June, right? So in that case, what we've got is we've got all of our interest now booked uh, into our revenue accounts. And don't forget, our note receivable now wasn't touched because we're dealing with an interest bearing note. So what we would do here is we see we've only had notes receivable and never touched it from the date we set it up at 4,000. So we're going to credit the note receivable for 4,000. And that gives us an entry that's balanced. Okay, now let's deal with long-term notes. They work differently because whether the note is interest bearing or non-interest bearing, all the interest receivable, any interest is going to go into the note receivable itself. So we don't have an interest receivable account. So um, if we have any uh, uh, premium or discount, and we're going to deal in our course with discount notes because they're the most popular, under um, IFRS, they require us to use the effective interest method. And you'll remember when we talked earlier about the notes, long-term notes, we did say that we use the effective interest method. So we're going to demonstrate how that works at this point. Now, the effective interest method is an IFRS requirement. Under ASPE, it's an option that by and large is followed. The other option with ASPE is to use straight line amortization for the note. And that's discussed very briefly briefly in your text, but we will not be covering it in our course. We're going to cover the more um, uh, familiar root ways of handling interest, and that's through uh, using the effective interest method. So let's have a look and see how long-term non-interest bearing notes would work. So again, non-interest bearing means that the rate of interest is implied. So in this case, we're going to have to figure out what the interest is. Why? Well, let's have a look. We have Glee issuing a three-year non-interest bearing note to a company called SAD, and the note is for $71,178. At the end of three years, Glee expects to get $100,000 back. So if you did the calculation, you would see that if we expect to get $100,000 back and our note is for $71,178, we're going to have to take in over a three-year period into interest revenue, uh, 28822 So that's um, what we'd have to take into interest revenue over three years. Not in any one year, but over a three-year period. All right, that's what we would be taking in. So we're going to use what we did in, in your previous course when we did bonds. We're going to use an amortization table to tell us how we're taking in that 28822 in over three years. And again, we'll be taking it into interest revenue, right? With bonds, we took it into interest expense. But this is a note. It's an asset. So we're going to be taking it into interest revenue. So the first thing we need to do in order to use the effective interest method and under that method, we take the carrying value of the note and multiply it by the market rate of interest. We have to calculate I slash Y, or your market rate. So we're going to use, using our calculator, we know our present value of the note is 71178 And because we're paying that out, it's a credit to cash, it's, I'm going to make it negative here by entering the plus minus. Over the three-year period, we're not making any payments. We're going to make our payment right at the end. All right? And that payment, so we have um, uh, a payment in the future of 100000 and we've got three years to make that payment. So if we did a compute I slash Y, we uh, have 12%. So when we set up our note, we're going to debit the note receivable and credit cash for 71178 but we're going to use our 12% in order to put together our amortization table. So we're going to take a short break here, and then when we resume our second part of the video, we will uh, demonstrate the uh, amortization table.